then people can enjoy my thick Danish accent. Yes. All right, good evening, folks. It is I, Chief Sarkan, with another episode of Ask the Chief Streaming here on MMORPG.com. Today, we are going to go into Wildstar once again, and today's episode is all about add-ons, all about Houston that is used to create add-ons, and as if you know anything about Wildstar, every add-on that the devs have access to, you have access to do. And to help me along, because I am an add-on noob, I use them a lot, but I don't write them, I have a special guest with me today. His name is Viper. If you know him from The Secret World, he is a very big add-on author that also happens to be, I like to call my personal add-on slave here in Wildstar, because when I ask, he generally entertains making me nice nifty little add-ons, and he's going to help me talk about Wildstar add-ons. So say hello, Torby. Hello. So here I am on my stalker. You've seen me on my stalker before. And the reason why we're on my stalker is Viper has made a very nifty resource add-on for stalkers. So the resources for the stalker is this nice red bar here at the top. We're going to go over the basics on how you would install an add-on. We're going to turn his stalker resource add-on on and show you the differences that are involved with the stalker resource bar. It's a beautiful thing. It's got lots of options we'll go through. And then we're going to jump over into Houston and kind of cover how it came about. How do you navigate through Houston? And if you know anything about Lua, I think I'm saying that correctly. That's correct. Um, which is the programming language. It'll be familiar to you if you're a complete noob like me. I'm just going to push mouse buttons while Viper directs me. So, hey, let's get to it. Let's have some fun. Ask your questions, and one of us will try and answer for you. So, here we are. We hit Escape, and we go into Options. We go into Add-ons, and we get a list of all the add-ons that are currently installed in the game, and whether they're on or off, and you can tell that by the green dots. And we're going to go ahead and go ahead right to our stalker resource one. This is the one we wanted to talk about today and show off. Um, right now, I have no add-ons turned on. In fact, let me return to the game real quick. Let's talk about a few of the changes that recently occurred in the patch. They changed the EXP bar and how it's done. They changed the resource or the interface, inventory and stuff like that up here, and a number of other UI um, effects. So anyway, let's go ahead and turn that add-on on. And there's a key thing. You change the lo load rules, and you can say load the add-on, or you can show advanced options. And you can say you only want this add-on to load for certain characters. You only want it to load on certain servers or certain accounts. Um, but today we have to say ignore mismatch to version because uh, we are in API number two not number three, which is what the new or API four. However you read this, we're, we're a version behind, right? <laughs> no, the, the thing is, uh, the add-on hasn't been updated to the new API, which is number four, which was introduced in the patch that came this Monday. Ah, oh, yeah. Tuesday or whatever it was. Yeah. <laughs> so so that, that's why you need to have that click because the add-on hasn't been updated to the new API. It's, it's, it's just a version check to make sure that that add-ons adhere to the version uh, of the add-on engine in the game. Perfect, perfect. So now that we've selected that, we can close this down and we're going to hit the reload UI, return to the game, and now you can see that resource bar is gone because one of the options he's given us is the ability to have it not display outside of combat. Okay, but we want to look at the options. So let me see if I remember the slash command for this. It's B S R S, right? Yes. There we go. Hey, yes. I remember. Hey, I'm I'm trainable. Now this is the <laughs> wonderful thing about his add-on is he just gives you so many options on how to make the resources for your class work. And he's even got a little information package here. I mean, just a beautifully done job. I mean, this is this is class A work here. And we're going to go through and we're going to take a look at. Here's the bar by default, and we can move its position. Well, you can talk about it a little bit. 
Yeah, but well, as as you can see, there's there's basic uh, customizations options. Like you can change the width and the height and the border width, uh, because that's basic stuff that people want. And of course, as Sarkan is showing, you can move it, which is obviously a great thing to have. <laughs> Um, I can also say there's a little extra feature, so I can, if you try and shift right click it, the, the bar, try and move it out to the uh, right side, or just out to the side, and then shift right click it, then it centers on the screen. Oh, so, so you can kind of automatically reset it just by a click command. That's awesome. No, it doesn't reset. It centers on the screen on the uh, vertical axis. That oh, so if I put it here, it'll just move it there. Yes. Nice. That's for all of uh, us OCD people that needs thing to be in the middle and stuff like that. So you know. <laughs> There we go. So I was just going to set this up kind of the way I did it before when I was testing it. Uh, where's my text? Open the font. I like to use the interface font because it makes the numbers smaller. But look at that. you got different types of fonts you can do. You can do different sizes of bars. I mean, you really put the, the options in here. I'm so impressed with this thing. Yeah, that's only half of it. <laughs> I know. We're, we're st let's get back up to the beginning, right? Um, then you can open up a bar style. Look at all these bars. I mean, he just gave you a ton of different choices to do this resource bar, and it's just phenomenal. I happen to like this little one here. That's just me personal. But, I mean, you can just click through here and just change the bar and the way it's used. And if you use the resources, you can see how it changes in look just by using one of your abilities and kind of get a feel while it's there, what it's going to look like and what it's going to do. And I think that's really cool. And I think you can change colors too, right? Yep. Yes, but the problem is we don't have that add-on activated right now. Oh, yes. There's another add-on called Color Picker in. Yes. That's not installed. So we're stuck with red, but that's okay. Yeah, the, the thing is, there's, there's, uh, a guy has made a uh, add-on that um, that basically uh, that basically all of us add-on users can add-on uh, developers can use to basically do our font, uh, sorry, the color changing we need to do, uh, and and that's nice and easy and very kind of the, the person who made it. So this add-on uses that, but it has been disabled for this showing because reasons. So sorry. <laughs> No, no worries. And so we had a comment here that they, they don't like the back background, but I was just going to get to the fact that, well, we can change the opac opacity so yeah, it doesn't stick out so much. You can but do the, the background opacity separate, yeah. which is pretty cool. Um, highlight quality. Yeah, the highlight is, is, is a little, uh, because when when the way that you do, uh, you apply the colors to these bars, it can kind of make them um, go a little boring in, in terms of the highlights. That's why I'm basically, I have a made highlight files for each bar, that then overlays uh, on top of the bar where you can kind of like, you know, get the intensity of the whites out of it if you want to. Just a little feature because I'm not... Oh bad. yeah, look at that. <laughs> highlight intensity, look at that. And that one is not the, the best to showcase it on. But, uh, but yes. <laughs> All right, well, let's pick one that you think the opacity would be better. Something like this? Or something like the default, uh, the bottom one to the left. This one here? Yeah. Okay, let's take a look. And we see it kind of intensifies the, the highlight. Oh, yeah, yeah, piece. the white on the edges yeah. and stuff. Okay, very cool, very cool. Just, just a little feature because, you know. So... And like I said, if we had the color picker involved, if you didn't like red, you could change it to, to pretty much anything in the spectrum um, yes. to give it some different effects. And like I said, it's, I, I, I kind of like the black, but some people don't. Maybe you want to just go with the stripes. And when you hit your thing, you can kind of see the difference there. Bar flash color. It should be noted, it's an it's an add-on that's that's still in in progress. I'm not done with it. Uh, it hasn't been released yet, so uh, I'm still working on it, and then there's still stuff that will happen. <laughs> right, and and so we're just covering the basics to give you an idea, because really today we wanted to show you the basic functionality of add-ons, but we really wanted to show you Houston, which is the tool that was completely developed in-house by Carbine Studios to allow add-on authors 
to participate in this adventure of making Wildstar interface the way you want to play, not just the way they give it to you. And so we'll get to that here in just a sec. But let's go ahead and look at some more of this. So here's specific about bar coloring, color intensity, um, standards, bases, and stuff like that. You can change the fonts we already talked about. Um, you can align the text where you want. Center, middle, left, so on and so forth. Text scale. Do you really want to get it? Oh, wow, you can make it a dot. <laughs> <laughs> So you check your check your font, and then you can further adjust it from there, which is really cool. And then you can offset it manually if you don't want to just go with the default left, right, center. I mean, really, a lot of choices. I mean, th this is my philosophy with making add-ons, because there's no one thing that fits everyone. So I want to give people options to customize the things, to have them work for them. And, and you know, despite me hate making option interfaces, I, I dread it. And, uh, I still do it because it, it makes a better add-on and people are able to completely customize it to how they like it. Because the way I like it might not be how someone else likes it. So, Yeah, case in options. point, I was at it asking you before we started the show about, can I move my XP bar somewhere? Because <laughs> I want to <laughs> move my chat window down to the bottom of the screen. I had the exact same problem. <laughs> you know, and, and I think there is an add-on author that um, actually has already done this for us, but yes. uh, um, he is not one of those that has been authorized to talk, so we'll keep him out of this for now, or her. I'm not sure which one it is. But um, <laughs> there's lots of nifty things that have been done. I know, for exa um, example, I had a simple add-on I had Viper make for me that just told me my position my X, Y axis, or X, Z axis, or however you want to look at it. Um, let's go turn that one on so I don't know if it still works, but. That should work. Where am I, right? That was it? Yeah. Reload add on. No, 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 advanced. Oh yeah, I got to do the APR. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It hasn't been updated. I'm slacking, I've been busy, sorry. <laughs> yeah, no worries, no worries. We just want to give a couple of examples. This so here he gave me this little window here that just tells me where I'm at on the map without having to do slash LOC. It's a convenience thing. Is it Was it a big deal? Um, not to me. It might have been from a programming standpoint, but... No, know, no, it, it was fairly easy. Don't it's, worry. It's there, you know, and I got a little slash command. I can move it around, whatever. Um, but these are just the type of things that are available to someone who has the capability. So let's jump into Houston, because that's where it all starts, right? That's how it's all made. Exactly. And so, here is Houston. Houston is just a basic file program. Not sure what to call it. I am seeing the chat screen. Hello, Tech. How you doing? So from here, I'm going to be a complete nub and probably just follow directions and do mouse clicks. However, um, I think we wanted to start with just opening your stalker add-on, correct? Yeah. So we're going to click the open button. And just so you know, um, the default location for um, add-on loading is out of your personal profile, roaming profile under Windows. So it's going to be your computer name or you. Um, let's see here. App data, roaming, NCSoft, Wildstar add-ons. And then you're going to have the list of add-ons that you've installed. Um, this one happens to be the stalker resource. And to load the entire package, and as you can see, there's a number of files here that's involved with this add-on. But if we, yeah, what am I doing? Go back, go back, there we go. So all these files are needed to make this work. But we're just gonna click on the TOC, which is a table of contents, hit open. And now you can see all these packages, and now I'm in complete new bland. So, here we go. Um, what do you want to explain on how Houston works first? You have the floor. Well, <laughs> um, Houston is, is a pretty standard uh, development environment. I mean, it, 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 it does what it needs to do. You have, uh, you have the XML editor, which is uh, trying to open one of the XML files. So, you can show. 
the, that's the sprites? A, not the sprites, that's a different. But oh, this one here? No, 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 the XML. Stalker resource system XML. That file. Oh, this here, okay. Yeah. You want me to open just, that? So yeah, just, just yeah. Okay. okay. Oh, you are. Uh, uh, I'm not that. set up to have this anchored anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> just can you just uh, dock it up in the. Oh, there we go. Or that. Then I click on the, the stalker resource system. You can okay. open the resource form. Double click the resource form. Double click it? Yeah. Uh, the name. Oh, there, there we go. go. Move the window. So I've seen this before. This yes. Is, this is pretty simple. It just basically is a properties menu, right? Yes, if you move it, you can see the bar behind it. Ah, so this is... And, okay. Yeah, that's basically the, the progress bar as you saw in game. Um, and, and, and as you can see from the tree, it has a, it has a lot of uh, uh, child elements that, that kind of makes up the entire thing. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. And it should be noted that these are generally, when, when placed, if uh, you can't set them in a set index, but when they're placed like that, the, the one at the bottom is basically the one that's listed uh, at the top in the stack, graphically. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's, a, it's a little reverse of what I would have done, but, uh, yeah. you know. <laughs> so basically, I mean, you name a form, you set its position, yeah. you got your colors. I'm just going over the what I see here is basics understanding. Yes. If you had any tooltip information, you would enter it here. I don't styles think I understand styles. <laughs> that's basically a bunch of attributes for oh, okay. this particular element. Like you can see, I want this to be movable, so I would take movable. Um, ignore mouse means it ignores mouse, funnily enough. <laughs> There's still some of these I don't know what to do because we don't have any documentation. So, yeah. <laughs> but uh, most of them make sense, and, and, and you can kind so, of figure out that they do. So all these options that you choose will end up being its own code that's written automatically for well, you. Well, it's no, no. It's not code. It's 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 an attribute for this element. It's it's. I mean, you can you can change it from within the code. Like say, I don't want this to be movable right now, which I do, for instance. Um, it's not movable unless you have the options window open, so you don't accidentally click it or anything. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. Well, and, I see, and, so there's the movable checkbox. That's yeah. not checked. Oh, so so it's basically just an. an, an a set of attributes that allows you to to say what what this element has or what you can do with it and stuff like that. I see. I see. So we clicked on the resource form, so we're seeing the resource form. Yes. And if we clicked on, say, the marker form, now we got the difference. Yes. And that's a feature that's not in yet, but yeah. <laughs> oh well, well. Ah. You've seen it here first. <laughs> Nice. You okay. will be able to set up markers and all kinds of uh, fancy stuff on the bar that will help you in, uh, in, in, in knowing when you are at certain points in your energy and, oh, there's something else there. Oh, Viber has been I'm creative in Illustrator. I'm now. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that's, that's stuff that's to come, yes. Um, basically, you, you, this is where you do all your XML. You don't need to go into the files and set up your XML. You have this. What you see is what you get, editor, where you basically set up all your graphical elements. And it, it works generally really well. It, it should be noted, Houston is, it still has some bugs, uh, or annoyances, I would say. <laughs> and and Carbine knows about this, because they are also struggling with them every day. And there's reasons why they haven't been fixed, and that's just too bad. But I'm sure down the line, stuff like this will be fixed. And, it's it's a minor annoyance. It's, it happens, and it, we're still in beta. Whatever, it it still works. Uh, the, the Houston is, as a, as as a whole, it's it's just a minor annoyance. I think that could be better and stuff like that. But it's a good editor. Okay, so crash course me here. Why I I'm seeing a Lua file, an XML file, and a sprite. Yes, uh, you can click the sprites because that's another part of the elevator. Uh, editor, even. <laughs> That's basically your sprite editor. Uh, if you you can uh, if you um, expand the sprites over on the left side. Over here. Yeah, and then the normal sprites. That's basically all the graphics I I have. Those oh. aren't very interesting. Oh. Click on uh, one of the bars, for instance. 
So the sprite is actually the graphical representation, and the XML yes. was how it's going to be interfaced with and what it does. Yes, I mean, if, if you use anything like a graphical file, that's not uh, one of the standard uh, carbine ones. You need to go in and create this sprite for it, uh, because everything in the game uses these sprites. And it's basically, it's, it's, it's an advanced version of, of the image, because if you go and look over in the, in the actual editor window, you can see that on the rulers, if you go to, to the right, there's these rulers on the top of, uh, left on the top of the bar, where you can drag these uh, points around, which basically defines what portion of the image gets used what's stretchable or repeatable and stuff like that. I won't go into uh, details. Yeah, we don't need with the gory what's details. What. Yeah, but, but basically you have this control and, and you, I usually create my sprites. Um, I mean, this is a bar and, and everything in there is what I need, but I could have all my bars in one single file and then just cut out what I need using the editor. Yeah. Or if you wanted to use a an outside image without changing it, you could bring it in and just use pieces of that image. Yes. Okay. Basically, you 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 allow you get the tools to define what area of the image you have loaded in you want to use, and you can then use multiple within the same image. If you want to make an animation, which you can also do in here, you um, you could have all your animation images in one file and then just you know decide this portion of it is first frame, this portion is the second frame, and so on. Ah, cool. So we have a question here. They're asking my experience with XML and sprites. XML, I would say I have a fair amount of experience with because I used to try and do some web design. Um, I also was involved with an add-on way back in Vanguard Saga of the Heroes. I had my own compilation. So I can hack up an add-on and re-modify it. Sprites are kind of a new thing for me. Um, so, yeah, so if you have add-on questions, that's why Viper's here. <laughs> <laughs> so please, type in your questions. Let's get you to see what you want to see. Um, but I am just trying to cover the basics, both for my understanding and yours. So hopefully we're answering your questions. So is there anything else you want us to uh, show us here while we're here? Uh, I mean, uh, as you can see in the sprite editor, there's button sprites, icon sprites, and so on. It's it's basically different versions of, of sprites, where a button sprite is basically one that has different sprites within it. But because of that, you can use it at, as a button, and, and it will then, uh, it's basically the different states of a button. Oh, so it's okay. like if it's pressed or mouse over and stuff like that. So you're, So when you need to use this as a button, we just define it, and it knows it's a button, and it uses the internal sprite and stuff like that. Normal sprites are basically just, this is an image file I want to get into my add-on. Right, gotcha. And you can swap between the different things here. You got the script, yes. your file trees down here at the bottom. I mean, it seems pretty simple to um, navigate around here. I'm, I'm rather it impressed is. with I mean, how simple it is. Especially if you have if you have any kind of programming experience, this will it's, it's easy. You just jump in and, and, and get started. It's it's easy. You the, it's a it's a familiar environment. So and, and you can open up and look at any of the add-ons that even Carbine made. So if we wanted to look at all the Carbine add-ons, we just click on here and pick one. So there's a question that says, can we see like the skill bar icons and the bars themselves? What they look like in a preview windows. Um, um, the well, you you can you can see the bar. The, that's an add-on. It's uh, the I can't remember what it's called right now. Ability bar, isn't the action bar or something? Action bar frame. That's the one down there. Yeah. So that's let's, that's. Let's, let's just try and take a look. Oh, that's yeah. the that's, that's the, the script. <laughs> oh, wrong one. Go. Uh, Files, you want to go to files. There, you go. there we go. I actually have it on the right. You have it open the, the forms. Oh, you have it. Uh, oh, I, I keep double clicking the wrong thing. I'm sorry about that. So here they're telling us it's read only because it's theirs. You can save them out if you want to. So here we are. We are looking at the actual carbine default add on. 
And so, no, the person we're talking about is not a game developer for Wildstar. He is a beta tester that is allowed to, that has come in to help us with testing add-ons and writing his own add-ons to in support of the process. So he's been very integral in helping us find bugs within Houston while he's been trying to mad scramble to make all these wonderful add-ons for everybody else to use. So he is not a game developer for Wildstar per se. <laughs> I'm just an enthusiast liking, uh, who likes yeah. to make add-ons. He makes add-ons like I make Wildstar spreadsheets and guides. So <laughs> that's pretty pretty fair assessment, right? You know? yeah. Yeah. So, so as you can see here, we are looking at the default carbine add-on. Now, if you wanted to save this as a new file and manipulate it, you could go through the entire process of making this the way you want it to look, load it in, and completely replace it. So, um, and that's basically the process I think most add-on authors go through is they pick a default add-on, play with it, take the pieces they like, and remash it. And then as they get more used to how Carbine does their add-ons, then they can start writing their own from scratch. Is that a fair assessment? That is correct. I mean, if if you have any interest in, in, in doing add-ons, I mean, it's it's not that complicated. The, if you have programming experience, don't fear trying to learn Lua, if, if that's your fear. Because it's if you have programming experience, it's just jumping into it. As at the main problem, as always, with making add-ons is learning the API from the game. You know, all the uh, functions and, and whatnot that the game uses. And I mean, that's that. And the way we find these now is we don't have any documentation, but there should be documentation uh, at release, hopefully. But, um, but right now, we just, if, if we want to do something, we go in and, and look for how it's done now. And then we adapt the code to what we needed to do. And, and that's that's how it works right now. And and there's a, a lot of great add-on developers beside me uh, that uh, that do uh, amazing stuff as well. And and, and there's more coming too every day. It's it's fantastic. Yeah. So we got a number. Like you said, we got a number of add-on authors in helping and testing. And uh, most people are probably pretty familiar with Packet Dancer. She was part of the whole article she even went down to carbine studios to interact with them really early on in um, the whole add-on development i know there's been some team efforts to work on some common repositories for add-ons some different tools for updating and and loading add-ons so it's not just add-on developments going on there's been documentation efforts tutorials that have been going on on the forum so if you're in beta there's an entire section dedicated to just add-ons. It's been a really awesome um, effort going on by a number of people because it's not easy stuff to do, but it is easy to do if you're familiar. So it's kind of, you know, one of those things. So anyway, um, I think we've kind of covered all the basics for you. Is there anything specific or any questions you have um, for us while we're here to show you Houston and the add-ons because um, that's basically we wanted to show up show off right now so anyway uh, like I said if you here's the default add-on and then if you go back to end game here you actually see it in person so kind of just gives you the reference really quickly of how the differences are between the two. So, um, as far as showing stalker specific um, abilities, um, I will probably pause this stream because this is just about add ons, and I'll start another show up in a little bit that will start going over different things like that. I already have a stalker show that I've done that if you wanted to go see it on my YouTube channel that covers the stalker abilities in depth. So, we're trying to focus on add ons for right this second. Yeah, can I, I can answer what uh, Kuzumura asked. I mean, um, the, an add-on you have to uh, think, or wait, basically, well, when we make add-ons, it's, it's for the UI, and the UI is basically just a 2D overlay on the game world. You have to kind of picture it like that. I mean, we, we can't go in and, and, and really modify anything that's, that's stuck in the, in the game world, like particle effects, if it's related to well, anything 
specific like the, a character that has particle effects around it that's not something we can we can modify unless of course we're giving the tools in an api way through the ui but but normally it's it's not something we can we can do anything about because it's we only have this 2d overlay where we yeah roam Hmm. Did I forget the slash command for this one? It's a VHSM. There you go. So this is another little add-on that I had uh, Viper make for me. Basically, it's telling me my experience level for my harvesting skill. Um, so just another little nifty thing that uh, you can do. And you can adjust the, the width of this and the height and all that stuff. So. I can put it over here this time, though. wherever I want. So, um, but like Viper is saying, though you can adjust the user interface and the overlay enough, there's a lot of things that we can't adjust that might potentially open up the game to cheating or gold farming or um, botting and all that stuff. So while you have access to all the user interface applications, you can customize them and change them up the way you want, there are some things handled server side that you're not going to be able to change your access. Um, there are people working on damage meters. There work at people working on um, health assistance, raid tools, stuff like that. But nothing that will affect um, what do you call it? Uh, <clears throat> I don't know change the tele you can you can adjust the opacity of the telegraphs but there's nothing ah. that can tell you where the telegraphs are going to be there's no user interface functionality that would say oh well this boss is going to put a telegraph here so move before it ah. happens that's correct we, that's we, we restricted can't do anything type about information that just yeah. does not allow and there's also a, a few things that are protected in in a way uh, for instance the ability um, slot we, we, we can't change those. Those are, those are an element provided to us, which I have complained about, I will admit. Um, and, and, and John is being very nice and trying to accommodate uh, all our numerous requests for our stuff we want and need and whatnot. Um, but, but there are some things that, that are protected. Like for instance, he recently, well, fairly recently made some some things where you couldn't delete um, equipment and stuff from add-on that required uh, you to use a button and, and, and stuff like that. So, so we can't do nefarious stuff to, to anyone who, yeah, who accidentally downloaded a malicious add-on. Someone had wrote for fun or something. So uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. So um, while we could, you could possibly move this entire bar somewhere. You can't just all of a sudden chop it up and have slots one and two over here, three and four over there. That would require an add-on, and, and I might make that uh, fairly soon. We'll see. Yeah, so um, there's a default options for telegraphs. So you're asking, can you change the colors of your telegraphs? I believe it's under combat. Yeah, and there's a colorblind options as well, but I don't think they're in yet, if uh, I remember correctly. So color but they, they will they make at least uh, stuff for colorblind people because they know it's it's an issue yeah, for so the different can, the, the types of colorblindness. Yeah, so you, you do have options to change the colors, change the things, and stuff like that. So um, there, those options are coming. They're very familiar with them. Um, if I don't like my telegraphs to be red, I can make them blue. That type of stuff is in there. You can make them lighter or dark. You can make them not showing any um, telegraphs at all if you want to. It de the customization and the, the number of default options are very impressive. And then you have wonderful people like Viper here. They can even tweak them even farther. And there's people requesting different things all the time just to try things out, change things up. And so it's very flexible. And I think you're going to see a lot of unique and diverse interfaces after game launch. So um, yes. let's see if there's any more questions here I can get to. Can you lock the UI? Yes. Most every well, basically, the UI is locked at all times. Yeah. So uh, <clears throat> go ahead. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the, the stock UI 
isn't very customizationable. If, the, if that's a word, I don't know. I'm Danish. I don't mind me. <laughs> there, there are some things you can like. You can move the minimap, and that can't be locked. But someone will fix that with an add-on. But generally, everything else is locked down. One thing I really try with my add-ons is that I want my add-ons, especially combat-related add-ons, to be uh, transparent to the mouse cursor. So, because combat add-ons you likely have around the center of your screen, where the action is and where your eyes are, and your focus area, which is very, very narrow when you're playing a game. Um, so, and you don't want those to suddenly accept mouse input. Because then you're like, oh, I need to turn right mouse button, la la la. And then you suddenly have clicked on something and it doesn't happen and you're frustrated and all this kind of stuff. So for me, it's very, very important to make things transparent to the mouse cursor. And that's why I only have the, the ability to move bars and, and stuff like that, like the store of resource add-on. You can only move that when you have the options window open. Otherwise, it's, it's transparent to the mouse cursor. So it's not something that will create uh, dead spots for the mouse on your screen. Yeah, so here you can see I'm moving this add-on. But if I type the command again, I can lock it, and then I'll no longer be able to move it. What was that? The VHSM move. Now it tells me it's locked. I can't move it, but now I get the tooltip. So now, um, because it's in move mode, I didn't have the tooltip. So you can really get your interface going the way you want it to and put things where you want them but now that by default it's locked you're not actually going to cause problems well with with that particular add-on when you have the tooltip enabled it, it will take uh, mouse input i can't do anything about that but you can then decide to hide the tooltips and the mouse input will go away so that I'm, works, I'm being asked where my uh my suit bar is you must have dialed oh. in late peter um we put in an add-on to adjust the suit bar. So as you can see, here's my suit power bar that is only active when I'm in combat. And when I'm out of combat, I have it set to dis to fade out. There is an option in my add-on to display uh, the uh, the suit bar at all times because some people like that. I don't want to get yeah, so to have it like that. <laughs> so we can go back into the options and we can turn it on to display always show. So now yes. it's there all the time. And like I said, we can change this, change the bar style and say, oh, well, we don't like the slashes anymore. Let's go ahead and make it honeycombs. I like the honeycombs. And so now it's honeycombs. And now it's up all the time. So this is what we were trying to showcase was this particular add-on, but this works for any add-on. So anyway, um, I think we've kind of run to the end of our add-on discussion. If you guys have any last-minute questions, we'll entertain those for a few more minutes, and then we'll go ahead and pause the stream. I'll grab something to eat, and then I'll probably come back, and we'll, we'll go over patch notes, changes that happened, show off some crafting, maybe go out and do some leveling on one of my characters and just have some more conversation. Um, but this particular show was specifically about add-ons, so give us your add-on questions and then we'll take a break. They removed one of the icons from the chat. Uh, I can't remember which one. Yeah, they? there used to be three buttons. I can't remember what the third one was that got removed. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember what it was either, but you can add your own channel and put your own things in there. You can lock the window so it can't um, be affected or moved. You can also um, separate those. All you can do is grab it, and now I can have a couple of windows. Yeah, you can't change the size of the UI currently. They know people want this, and they really want to do it, and hopefully it will be in by launch. But uh, I, I don't know what the status of it is, but they, they really want to do it, and that's really all we know right now that they, they know people want the, the ability to scale the UI, but it's not a simple thing to do. Yeah, so most things aren't scalable, but you can change sizes of some things. You can see here I'm really messing with my chat window. Um, and you can set it up to be whatever size and shape you want just by dragging it. So, I mean, that's 
a lot of the features and functions in there are like that. So, and they really changed this. It used to be where it was default to stay visible all the time, um, but sometimes you can't. So uh, now it's default to where it just says, hey, it's going to fade out unless you modify it, lock it. Um, there used to be an option here. You got your emotes. You can just do emotes here. Not all the emotes work right now, but that's okay. So that's the idea there. Let's see. Also, oh. uh, Jonathan, uh, currently all add-ons are only posted on the beta forum since we aren't allowed to uh, put them anywhere else, basically, because they're still on the NDA. Um, so yeah. If you're in beta, you can find them on the uh, beta forum and the add-ons and user interface customization forum thing. Yeah. And uh, it's not hard to pull in uh, the tells and, and stuff uh, for add-ons. Uh, Packet Dancer has already made a uh, chat add-on and is working on a, a new version, uh, far more complicated uh, and advanced. Um, so a chat add-on is, is fully possible to make. I mean, basically, we can make everything. There are, of course, some uh, restrictions in, in terms of, of limiting what we can do. So we can't make automation and, you know, but kind of things like it is in every other game. But basically, everything else we can make. There, there are still some restrictions that are not intentional, I'm sure. And uh, we are doing our best to get the John and the team to uh, allow us to make these things or make the, it possible for us to make these things. Um, and I, I'm sure we'll get them. It's, it's just a matter of they're busy as all hell. Uh, so, it's, I mean, it takes time and, and, and they don't have a lot of time, but they want to accommodate us, I'm sure. So we'll get it at some point. Yeah, so uh, Kasumura has a question there for you if you want to yeah. tackle that uh yes you can make uh, buff counters and and yeah whatever you want it's uh, there is already a uh, buff add-on that someone has made it's a very nice one um and it, it basically gives you various options for how you want to show your buffs debuffs and cooldowns and stuff like that um so it's it's uh yeah, it's basically everything is possible uh, of, of, of what you expect. And of more so, it will be uh, come release, I'm sure. There's still some things that uh, that needs to be put in, but I'm sure it will be put in uh, soon enough. Yeah, and as far as where to download uh, add-ons in the future, I know they're working on different places to store them. They'll be centrally located, not just on the forums. There are probably add-on sites that will come into play. Um, of course. We're, we're not really sure of where that will all go eventually. Um, but, you know, um, there's a question about the map, the different districts of the capital city. Um, well, the, the map is broke down in different areas, and if you were to talk to the guards, they can kind of direct you to the different parts of the city. Um, but we're not going to cover that right now. But this is a recent add-on. This is brand new, um, being able to ask where to go and find the auction house per se, or um, where's the transmit terminal? It's going to go tell you over here. So the guards have really started to help us out with that. Anyway, so with that, uh, I think we'll call it good right there. Uh, I hope you found this very informative as far as the world of add-ons are concerned. The sky is the limit. Um, Carbine <laughs> has really done a really good job about being very open about what you can do, what you can't do, and there's just so much potential here. I mean, we probably got, what, I would say 30, 40 active add-ons in the forums right now? Somewhere around there? Yeah, that's not a bad number. Uh, um, and and more are coming. Being tweaked, <laughs> but, you know, some of them are not up to date. <clears throat> I've, uh, they, while they work, you just have to. <laughs> anyway, so you all have a great night. Um, like I said, I'm probably going to go eat and come back and stream some more because I want to get get into some of the changes that have happened with the recent patch. 
and all that, but I want to keep this just focus on add-ons. So anyway, you guys all have a great night. Thanks for coming out, and we'll talk to you later. Appreciate thank it. Thank you for having me, and thank you for showing up. <laughs> yeah, it was great having you on the show, and hopefully we'll do that again. Eh, I'm available. Yeah. <laughs> Let me give you my sign-off information here for all of you. Wow, my, my own links are being deleted. What happened there? <laughs> It showed up here. At least the phone. I'm not allowed to post into chat. What the heck? Learn. I may have to reset my. Uh... No there problem. There we go. It just didn't. Stop ride. spamming. Come on. Oops. I'll try this again. What? It's showing up here. Oh, there we go. Yeah, I had the uh, chat window popped out, so it was easier to read, and it wasn't letting you do links in it. Uh. Stop anyway. nooping it up. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> so for those of you that do happen to like my show, please be sure to follow me in all the appropriate locations. Uh, though I stream almost exclusively here on MMORBG.com, I do appreciate follows on my own channel because you never know. I don't always stream just Wildstar. I stream lots of different stuff. So anyway, we will see you again really soon.